In this video, we'll study the average and instantaneous power and its application. This is part 6 of the video series in the starting from the work done by the force, going to the work done by gravity, in video 2, video 3 is work done by elastic, and in video 4, the work energy theorem, and in video 5, the conservation of energy. And this will be the last video. Part 6, which is the average and instantaneous power and its application. So, we are now about to answer what is instantaneous, what is average power, and what is power. Okay. Power. Now, suppose we have this inclined plane. Suppose I have this object. Take note that if we release this freely uh, to the surface of the inclined plane, so when you, when you release this one, this will move down the plane it provided that the friction is less than the component of the weight parallel to the plane down the plane so since this was displaced from point one okay point one to point two then therefore this should there, there must be work done now if there is work done with time then we call that as power because power is defined as the rate of doing work now take note that work is done so if you, are, you want to quantify the amount of work for a given time of travel from 1 to 2, then it is power. So dividing work done by time is power, we call this the rate of doing work. If, you, if, if your power is less than or, or small compared to the previous, then what does it mean? Then your time is greater than the previous so you are only you only accomplish that amount of energy for that given time so if you want to have more power you have to reduce the time okay? you have to reduce the time in order to to get higher power so for example if we have the stack pile you have the stack pile and you want to trans transport that stack pile from one point to another, if you use your hand only, how many days that you will accomplish that work? Compare that if you will use a uh, loader or, or grider, a high uh, equipment. So therefore, uh, take note, it, it is talking about the, the power exerted by that machine. So therefore, if you reduce the time, you are increasing the power. You can finish the work within one week. But we can finish that within a day. Or maybe within a, within a seconds or an hour. Okay? So, talking about time is talking about the power. So, if you reduce the time, again, you are looking for high-powered equipment. So, what is power? Okay, so mathematically, the average power, P of means average power, is the work per time. So this is actually the change in work. Is This is the change in work. But take note, work start from zero to the final work. So it is simply as W over the time. This is the time interval also. So if you divide, quantify the amount of work per time is the average velocity. This is the definition of the average velocity. Now, if we take the limit of this average velocity, average power, taking the average, the limit of the average power as delta t, means this time approaches zero. Okay. Now, take note in calculus, evaluating the function with respect to, uh, evaluating the limit as the denominator approaches zero. Then, take note this is not zero. Instead, this will produce a very infinitesimal change. So, this will become dw over dt. So, therefore, if you take the derivative of work with, the, with respect to time, we call this as instantaneous power. So, this is an instantaneous power. Okay? So, what is now the unit? What will be the unit of this power? Now, take note, the unit of, of work is what? Joules. And the unit of time is seconds. So, this is seconds. So, therefore, the unit should be what? Joule per seconds. The energy per time. 
But that one joule per second is this is one watt. Watt is the unit of power, and this is is I. So the the answer to answer the question unit, the unit should be in watts. Big letter W. Take note of the, using the literal symbol because and the small W corresponds to the weight, but the big W as the unit of watts. Or you can show, you can use the word watt W E double T for simplicity. Big letter W. Okay, this is in is I. Now we have another unit of 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 power. We have the horsepower. And this is British system or the English system unit. It's P. It's P means horse power. Now we have the relationship between the uh, uh, watt and power. In one horsepower, there are 400, 7, 746, 746 watts. 746 watts is one horsepower. Okay. Now the meaning of horsepower is. This is the power of a single horse. If we have two horse power, means we have two horses uh, in that event. But one horse power is 746 watts. Now in electrical units, in, in, in our electric bill consumption, our, our consumption is in terms of the kilowatt hour. So when we say kilowatt hour, this is not the unit of power because the kilowatt is the unit of power. 1000 watts is kilo, 1 kilowatt. So, therefore, the kilowatt is the unit of power, but you multiply that with time. So, if you multiply with time, we call it kilowatt hour. So, therefore, this is not a unit. The kilowatt hour is not a unit of power, it is a unit of energy. It should be the energy unit. So, in our water, our electric bill we cons we consume the amount of watts per of, of, of the number of hours that we use the for example the bulb okay so kilowatt hour this is a work, unit of work or maybe energy but not a power okay so take note that what is work? Work is a net product of the the force. The unit uh that product of force okay, limit this one. No need. This is only F dot dr. This is the definition of work. Infinitesimal infinitesimal work done is F dot dr. Okay. Now take note that this one, okay. Dr over dt is what? This is velocity. Okay. So therefore, another way to calculate the instantaneous power aside from dw over dt, it is the same as force dot v. This is the velocity. This should be the what? Velocity at that particle. This is pn is the instantaneous, instantaneous power for the force doing work on a particle. And F is the force that acts on the particle. And the velocity is the velocity at that point of particle. Take the dot to product of that. Force that velocity is power. Okay, so these are the definitions of the power. There are many ways to calculate. If given the work done, divide by time, that's it. Or maybe given the force and given the velocity, take that product of that, then the answer is your instantaneous power. Okay, let's have this example. We have a crypt when a motorized car starts from rest and moves with a constant eastward, eastward, so going to the, to the right, eastward. Acceleration of 2.8 meter per second squared. A worker assists the cart by pushing on the cart with a force that is eastward, so this direction, has a magnitude that depends on time according to this relationship. So therefore, take note that the time, the force applied is changing with time. Okay? But even even if you change the, the, the ch changing the force with time, the acceleration is still the same. 
The accelerator is 2.8 meter per second squared. Now, the question is, what is the instantaneous power supplied by this force? The force at that time of application is 5 seconds solution. So, the question is, how much power for that force applied to the creek in 5 seconds? So, what will you do? What will be the formula to be used? Okay. So, again, take note that force is changing. So, therefore, we will use the instantaneous power. So it should be the force that V. So, the meaning of that, take note, is cos cosine. So, therefore, it should be the magnitude of A times the velocity, okay, times the cosine. But take note that this is a stored. The displacement or the velocity direction and your force are the same. So, Q should be, the angle P should be 0. So, substitute 0 here, cosine 0 is 1. So, simply we have the force times B. So, to answer this problem, what is the instantaneous power supplied by this force within this time, it is simply as A times B. But what is A? This is the force applied to the crate with this relation 5.4 during the time of 5 seconds. So therefore, your F is simply as, is simply as substitute the T here with 5 seconds, that is your F. Okay? So do it. So, your F now, which is a function of T, is 5.4 Newton seconds. This is Newton seconds because this, you have to multiply this by T. So, this will be cancelled out, leaving as the unit of Newton. So, nothing to worry with the unit. So multiply this with what? So so what's the what will be the force at at the time of five seconds? So replace that with here. So the answer is seventy two newtons. So this is the force to be replaced here. Okay. So now what is velocity? Now velocity this is a function of time again, but the acceleration is the same. Okay, a function of time. So, take note that the final velocity in, in, in kinematics is the initial plus the product of the acceleration times time. Review your kinematics. The velocity is a function of time. is the initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. Take note this is zero because this is from rest. This is from rest. Okay, so the initial is zero. Then replace that with, <coughs> with time of 5 seconds. Okay. So, get, take the 5 seconds so that we are obtaining the velocity at 5 seconds in time. Because our force is force at 5 seconds. So, therefore, the, the, the velocity should be the same time. So, therefore, uh, evaluate this is 0. This, the initial velocity is 0. By the way, this is not... This, this will be... This is not included. This is cancelled out. This is A. A was already replaced by the value. So, 2.8 meter per second squared times 5. Then you have to, you can cancel the second square by is. So, what we have now is 14 meter per second. So, this is our force and this is our velocity. Substitute it here. So, sorry, this is meter. This is Newton already. Okay, this there was a discrepancy of that. This should be twenty seven. Okay, twenty seven. This is twenty seven. Okay, times fourteen times 14 so what will be the, what will be the answer uh, can you use your calculator okay twenty seven five point four times five twenty seven 
times 14. So, it should be 3. So, this is correct. This is 3, 378 watts. This is the answer to the problem. Okay? So, the most important is the definition of the instantaneous or the formula. Okay, so this is the answer to the problem. Another problem is we have 20 kilogram rock sliding at a rough surface, horizontal surface. Initially, 8 meter per second and eventually stops due to friction. Imagine an object, a rock is moving in horizontal surface with the, with the initial velocity of 8 meter per second. That because of friction, what will happen? It will stop. The question is, what average power is produced by friction as the rock stops? So take note that the friction is always against the motion. So how much energy or how much power applied by that friction? Because he was able to stop the the sliding rock through a rough surface. So what will you do? Okay. So take note this is the surface, okay? Then we have this rock. The, the rock has a mass of 20 kilograms. The friction is present here. So it depends upon the surface. The amount of friction here depends upon the surface in contact with the plane and the rock. And the uh, problem says that the coefficient of kinetic friction at the surface is 0.2. So this is mu key. Okay. And this 20 is the mass. Now take note that that the initial velocity is the initial velocity is 8 meter per second so therefore because of this initial velocity this object will move but it the 8 will be decrease decrease until stop why because of friction if if the the surface is smooth then this will move at constant speed but because of friction this will reduce because the friction will decelerate the uh, moving object. So, the problem says that with time, this object stops. So, the final velocity should be what? The final velocity should be zero. So, the question is how much power? It should be average. Okay? It should be average. Why? Because this is constant force. Friction is constant. So, therefore, this should be an average power. So, how will you how will you solve this problem? Given the initial velocity, 8 meter per second, and the final velocity, take note, is 0. Okay, so we can use it. And the mass is 20 kilograms, and the coefficient of friction is 0 0.2. What will be the average, the average power? So take note, average is uh, W over dt. Okay, but what is W? Double is work. Okay? So what is work? Take note, this work is what? This is only work done by friction. There's no other force along the horizontal axis. Only friction. And it is against the motion. That's why it stops a certain distance. So talking about work here, it will be the work done by friction only. Okay? Because ang because the weight is perpendicular to the surface, so work is zero. The normal is also perpendicular, so work done is zero. So, therefore, uh, work done is only for friction. And that's the problem, says. What average power is produced by friction as the rock stops? So, therefore, okay, what is work done by friction? Take note, work done friction is negative, okay? But we will ignore negative here because we want to know how much is the, how much is the amount so disregard the sign we know that work done by friction is negative but it is the reason why does the rock stops so by magnitude it should be mu mu take note friction is what friction is mu n so this will mu k m g multiply it with the displacement we don't know the displacement say it delta s because displacement is not given so mu k m g mg is the normal and mu k is friction so mu n is friction multiply by displacement this work okay now take note that 
again that's why it's, this is negative why because the 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 cosine there must be a cosine here cosine of 180 cosine of 180 is negative so we ignore the negative sign so therefore it is simply as the frictional force times displacement over dt now take note we don't have the displacement we don't have dt okay but take note that what is d is over dt d is over dt is what this is the average velocity okay so mu k mg times the average velocity but what is average velocity ah we have the initial velocity and we have the final so if we if we if we if we want the average so you have to add this one then divide by 2 okay that's the average add 8 plus uh, b1 plus b2 divided by 2 is the average velocity sorry this is this should be add add b1 plus b2 b1 plus b2 this is the average velocity okay then after that all you need to do is to add uh, this is zero this is zero b2 okay this is zero so therefore substitute the values no 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 this is this is this is zero and this one is eight okay and this is plus okay the same this same result so this is zero because this is we we use this as final plus so it should this should be if this is initial and this is final add that okay so okay this is now this is now correct so this is already correct but this one this will be plus okay so initial is 8 and the final is 0 so calculate okay calculate and the answer is 156.96 watts okay so therefore this is the answer to the problem what average power is produced by friction as the rock stops okay so these are the problems practice problem for you to answer so please do it solve this using uh, the principle of finding the or this in this topic this is a good practice for you so okay so that's all thank you